Hello, welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. So, following on from my last video, I have put together Tamiya's venerable um, Douglas A1H Sky, Day, Sky Raider, and that's the US Navy version. So, um, and that is all in order to test these. Um, first test of these new airbrushes I received from Galeri. So first off I'm using the GHAD 68 trigger airbrush. I fitted it with the 5 point, uh, 0.50 needle and no nozzle assembly. So what I've done is obviously assembled the aircraft into a subsection so we've got on here we've got all the bombs and the main undercarriage and on here we've got all the hard points uh, wheels exhausts uh, front wheel wells covers and the fuel tanks um, got the tweezers with the other hard points for the underwing stores and then we've got the aircraft we've got the engine mast up so we already painted that off camera um, and then obviously we've got the aircraft together and canopy or mast. So what we're going to do first is we're going to see how the paint goes down. So 0.5 needle PSI sitting at 20 PSI maybe, slightly lower than that. So with this thing you can if you pull back you get air first which is nice so you don't go straight to paint so pull back you feel so first stage take up the second stage is paint and then paint starts coming out so you've got a reasonably fine and this is the real way to test airbrushes because we're spraying time air xf paints on plastic Dust coat first. Checking all the seams. And then we can put more paint down, pull the trigger right back, and we'll get the top cover coat on it. Uh, I'll try and not knock the camera. I think what I'll do is I'll try and zoom out a little bit so you get more of a frame. There we go. Let me see how it goes. That is putting down a really rather nice primer coat. Nice even paint. Nice even paint distribution. There's no lumps or bumps. A beautiful flat finish. We'll spray one side and then I'll get the underside. Mm. 
Make sure we get the leading edges. Trailing edges. That one was fine. With a little bit of build up in the crown cap. see that there it's a bit of paint build up in there that does sometimes happen when you're putting a lot of paint down the easiest way to clear that is cotton bud or a q-tip got a little pool this is just uh, Tamiya X20A in a chemical dispensing bottle a little pull down on the mat soak the q-tip and just back and forth motion, dry end. There we go. Spray off to one side. Right, and we're back on. So, Not too not too worried if I get paint in there, it's gonna be painted white anyway. I will try and avoid getting too much paint in the wheel wells, um, but I really just painted them to make sure areas we're not gonna be able to get to before we constructed it had the right amount of paint in. Certainly on full pull, you're getting a lot of paint down there. You get a nice, even coverage. See the little glisten under the light? Um, nothing's getting flooded. You've got, you've got nice atomization of the paint. Restricted in here with the camera. I'll just turn it over so we're nearly there with the whole airframe. Come around the other side. There we go. This is quite a large, for 48 scale, just quite a large aircraft. Always make sure you get your leading edges, trailing edges, ends of the wings.
Right, that is the main airframe painted. So, what I'm going to do now off camera, because you don't want to see me painting everything all the time, is I'm going to paint the rest of these ancillary parts, and then we'll come back and look at probably putting down the uh, the white under surfaces and control surfaces. So, be back in a few minutes. Okay, so we are back, and everything has got a primer coat on it. Now, I have made up some insignia white so that's basically white paint with a good dollop of um, buff in it that makes it just off white um, it's a little bit I think I've actually over over colored it with a buff but not to worry um, it'll actually work in our favor because we'll uh, put layers of this paint down and layer it with normal Tamiya white so it's a pre-mixed paint I've thinned it in the pot um, just get it poured in the color cup and there was a little bit of thinners in there to start with and this is where so I'm, I'm using the the 98D airbrush same 3 mil setup as the 68 this is where this little color protective cap comes in handy because we can just do a little bit of blowback and that just um, makes sure that the the bit of thinners that I put in the brush first is mixed in and of course I dribble it everywhere there we go clean the airbrush off make sure we don't drip any on the model right so now I've put gloves on because I don't want to get my greasy paws on this lovely uh, priming. And I think you can see in the video, here we go, the beautiful matte finish. All the details are popping and it looks really, really nice. Right, I need to adjust a couple of bits here before I start because I'm going to end up dropping a load of stuff. And getting tangled up with me air hose as well right so what we want to do now this aircraft was flown in the Southeast Asia theater and it will have been well worn so what we can start to do is do a little bit of marbling in the panels White is a particularly difficult color to spray sometimes because it can be very, very um, dusty and grainy finish. You can see there, but the airbrush is laying this color down rather nicely. We can always add more thinners to it if we need to help it flow better but this is flowing really nicely so it's a 3.3 needle and on top of the dark grey then obviously we're getting a lovely contrast and we get a nice tight paint pattern Usually when I'm doing this work, I'll use a 0.2 needle. So it just shows that with a 0.3 needle, we've got lovely control. We're not getting any tip dry. What we can also do with the airbrush is we can just take the crown cap off. And that'll give us a little more control. So we ought to see the point of the needle. We ought to see where we're applying the paint. So. Go back over the first panel. You 
and you want a random pattern, you can use the paint masks to do this, as a lot of companies now produce paint masks to get this mottled effect. Or you could just save your money and practice your airbrush skills. panels then we can change it up a little bit and just put more of a defined line in there. There we go. I like the centers of the panels. Same with the control surfaces. Paint the panels on the front side of the wing. And if you want to highlight these panels, we can lay down a solid color for the small inspection panels, maintenance panels. That will make them stand out a little more. So you can see we've got some really, really nice control with this airbrush. There we go, so this is the marbling pre-shading technique um, and it works really well obviously for light colored paints on a darker background. So I am going to complete the whole model and then when we've got the first coat down then we'll look back coming down and putting the second coat down that will blend it together and, and obviously lay, the, lay that lovely um, insignia white color on the underside of this aircraft. We also have to do the uh, control surfaces so all these um, elevators uh, rudder ailerons um, all get painted with a coat of white and we also need to paint the tanks and uh, the bomb racks too so i'll get on and do that because uh, it's going to take me a little while and i'm sure you don't want to watch me doing the same thing over and over for the next half an hour We'll come back when I'm done and we'll look at the next stage. Okay, so we're back. Got the top control surfaces primed in, rudder, and then we have got the underside done. So you can see it's not taking me too long, maybe about 10, 15 minutes. Obviously I haven't done any of the uh, underwing stores yet, but I thought if I get the main body of the aircraft done, then we can do the rest of it the similar standard off camera so you can see we've got the marble pattern on most of the panels some of the panels here here and the air brake here I've used a slightly different technique where we've got a solid paint finish at the front and then we're flicking the brush up to make it look like we've got a bit of air streaks on it 
same with here solid along the front then flick in action keep them within the panel lines to give you that faded look um, so when we're happy with the first stage pre-shading um, pre what we need to do then is come back and apply the blend coat so you're holding the airbrush a little bit further away I'll try and get some film there we go and you want to pull back and get more paint and lay down and you want to miss the paint down so watch as it goes down we're just missing it down We don't want to flood the color. We just want to start bringing it all together whilst retaining the pre-shading underneath. Leave that a moment to dry. Check and see. Always consult your references. You should have had that panel shaded in here at the front. All right, move to the tail. Unfortunately, I have managed to pick up some dust. paint finish it's there that's not a problem put them back in so same again for the tails Make sure you get all the trailing edges, wingtips. And when you're painting in up against the fuselage, it's obviously going to be a different colour. Make sure you've got a bit of overlap so when you mask off the areas painted white, you uh, don't end up with any unpainted areas. the upper control surfaces obviously they've been pre-shaded and I've managed to catch that one unfortunately not to worry just blow back in over the area and then airbrush back make sure we get plenty of overspray that we're not going to miss any So we get the top of the rudder, trailing edge. Okay. When we're happy, we go back on the underside and go for another coat. Make sure we also get Make sure we also get the the wheel wells um, doors. This is the one of the fall downs of this particular Tamiya kit. Is you have to attach them as a part of the construction. 
so you don't have any option to attach them after the fact. So, so we'll take a different way instead of going long ways, we'll go across ways on the wing. Start from the tip, working our way in. back over ourselves just until the point we're seeing it's shading it's just nearly blended in we want to leave some of it we don't want it to be too stark but we don't want to lose it all if you need to you can just pick out individual panels to highlight a bit further just very fine paint coverage so you retain that mottled look underneath just to give that little bit of a weathered look. Make sure my workshop is a bit dusty at the moment. I'm certainly picking a lot of dust up on the model, which is unfortunate. In here, and again on the other wing. And we're out of paint. So, quick top up. I said pre thinned in the pot so we can get it straight in the colour cup. And there we are, I think we're just about there. I'm happy enough to stop at that. Just a little bit here. Right at the front. I think you can see, hopefully you should be able to pick that up. We still have lovely tonal variation in the paint. We've got a bit of interest in there. And when we get with oil washes and weathering on, that's going to blend that in beautifully to give us a nice mottled finish. Right, so I'm going to set that aside to dry. It shouldn't take too long, and whilst that's drying, I'm going to go and get on and finish off um, all the other under st underwing stores uh, ready for masking up to lay the top coat. So, for you a moment, for me, maybe half hour or so, I'll be back. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see, we have all the underwing stores now painted up and hopefully you can see on the 
film. We've got a nice tonal mottled finish on the underwing stores and we can have a look again at the underside of the Sky Raider. Right. Um, I think you can see with the reflectivity we have a beautiful smooth paint finish. Um, it was the paint I was using, just to confirm with everyone, so it was Tamiya's Gloss White mixed with Buff, XF57 Buff, which has left a fantastic satin finish. Um, so, Gallery GHAC98D, so that's obviously the dual airbrush. First impressions, putting paint down in anger. Um, I am actually very impressed. Uh, I can't get over how one easy it is to use. Um, control is excellent. Uh, paint flow has been excellent. I've had absolutely no tip dry whatsoever, which using Tamiya XF paints you are prone to get in. I have as much versatility and control as I do with all my other airbrushes. Cleanup, as you can see, is very, very easy with the high chrome finish on the inside of the color cup. Um, it's cleaned it no problem at all. Uh, air usage on the compressor, I don't think it uses any more air as any of my other airbrushes. Um, Yeah, really pleasantly, no, I'm not going to say pleasantly surprised because I had high hopes for this airbrush. I would say that my aspirations for how the airbrush is going to perform have been fulfilled. Um, and that goes for the, the 68 as well. Uh, the 68 has performed really really nicely as well in putting down the primer coat that so that was with the 0.50 needle and the white underside has been put on with the 0.3 um needle so very impressed for a first use uh, i think it's excelled itself and it's a testament to the build quality and design features that Galleria have, have included in these airbrushes. So I'm really, really happy. I'm going to leave the paint to dry. Um, it's now knocking on 11 o'clock at night. So I'm going to leave the paint to dry. Because I'm obviously going to have to mask up for applying the grey coat on the upper surfaces. So we'll come back in the next video. And we'll look at applying the grey coat. And we'll see how we can maybe use the trigger airbrush and I'll put the 0.3 needle in the trigger airbrush and we'll see if we can get as fine a paint coverage on the upper sides with the grey colour as we have done with the white. But first impressions are excellent. I'm really, really impressed with the quality of the airbrush and the quality of the paint finish. Um, so 10 out of 10, I think. Um, I've got no qualms at all. Anyway, enough waffling. We'll see you in the next video.